Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video we're going to take a look at the sealed keyword in C Sharp and explain why it is a keyword you should be applying to every single one of your classes with some exceptions that I will be talking about in this video to gain the benefits of doing so. If you like the type of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe ring the notification bell and for more training, check out nicktrapsus.com. All right, so let me show you what I have here. And first, we need to understand what we will be talking about. So first, I'm going to create a new class over here and call that test types because we will be running some tests here to demonstrate not only the functional aspect of the keyword but also the performance aspect because believe it or not it is a huge focus of the dotnet team the dotnet team at this point by default is applying the seal keyword on every internal class that they have they retroactively went and they changed their existing code and also most of the new public ones are sealed by default and it's a very specific reason why they do that let me just add a few types here to demonstrate what the seal keyword is and what it is doing. So first we have this base class over here with a couple of virtual methods. And now every class by default is open to inheritance. So if I wanted, I can go ahead and make a class that extends this base class. So I have something like this. I have an open class that extends the base class. And in this case, I'm overriding both of these methods. However, I can also have a closed or sealed class. To do that, I'm just gonna create the same thing as an open class, and I'm gonna go ahead and apply the sealed keyword. And now I cannot go here and say public class extend the extended class and try to extend the sealed class. It just doesn't allow me to do that. It says that, hey, you cannot inherit from a sealed class. So sealed is preventing me to inherit any further. Now, in my opinion, this is a flaw in the design of the language. It shouldn't be that you explicitly close your classes, seal your classes. Instead, it should be that they are sealed by default and you explicitly open them up. This is something that Kotlin does. In Kotlin, everything is closed by default, it is sealed by default, and you have to specify public open class to allow it to be inherited. And that makes sense because you want things to be inherited if they're designed to be inherited. Not everything should be inherited by default. This is a bit of a flawed design and since it was something that was there since version 1, they couldn't really change that. And this isn't a niche idea or a new concept in programming or C Sharp. Uh, someone you might be very familiar with has actually talked about this in a Stack Overflow post all the way back in 2008. Drum roll, yes, it is actually just John Skid. Of course, it is John Skid. So all the way back in 2008, someone asked, why are we doing this? Why aren't classes sealed by default? And he explained, uh, it, he thinks it's a mistake. It shouldn't be like that. Uh, he knows at least a couple of people in the design team that are uh, backing him up in this idea. And I think he mentions Eric Lippert and Cyrus. Uh, now, it doesn't matter. This is 13 years ago. It's a long time ago. But this idea that everything should be sealed by default is not new. It's been like this for a long, long time. And I'm pretty sure that if you ask more of the C-sharp language designers at this point, they would agree with this idea because it makes sense. Because once something is open for extension, then changing that aspect of the class is a breaking change. So if you're building a library and you didn't close or seal something when you pushed it out, then you cannot take that away without having to create a new major version. Now, this is great and all, but it is not why people like Steven Tobe has been going around sealing every internal class in the .NET SDK and runtime. The reason why they've been doing that is because of performance. And believe it or not, there is a performance difference in non-sealed and sealed classes. And if you are doing that on the SDK level or the runtime level where, well, everything runs on, then even though it's a small performance gain, it will actually add up to every service that is using .NET. Let's go ahead and see what those differences are. We're gonna go ahead and add benchmark.net in this project. Here we go, I'm gonna install that. And I'm going to create a benchmarks class and add my memory diagnoser because I wanna know what's happening with memory now. Spoiler alert, not much, but I still wanna show you that this is the case. And then we can start writing our benchmarks. We're going to start with the three classes, the base class, the open class, and the seed class. All that is over here. And first, we just want to take a look at invoking those methods. Is there a difference between calling the non-sealed class over here and the sealed class here? 
So we're going to go ahead and add those benchmarks. So first we have the two void methods. So open class void method call and sealed class void method call. And I'm going to go ahead and add the open int method call as well. And then add something just to show some differentiation that I'm doing something with this call basically. Um, and for now, that's it. All I'm going to do then is go in the program.cs, say benchmarks or, or benchmark runner actually, and then benchmarks here. Here we go. And I'm just going to run those four tests and see what we get. Everything is in release mode, so it will be running in the optimized code version. And this is running on .NET 7 RC2 at this point. All right, so results are back and let's see what we have here. So the open avoid method point two of a nanosecond. Again, we're talking about super, super small numbers, but you have to understand the differences. And the sealed void is 38 times faster than the open void just by sealing the thing that wasn't supposed to be inherited in the first place. So that's a big increase. But then you have the open int method and the sealed int, and this is a thousand times faster. That's a lot. <laughs> So you have to understand that even though, you know, we're talking about very, very small levels of performance, very small numbers, it is still a lot between the two cases. And it isn't something you have to really put effort in. If something is internal or private, just seal it by default. You can change it if you ever need to extend it. And on your public API, obviously don't break anything that is public already if you have consumers, but if you want, you can and you're going to gain some benefits. Now, this is not the only thing that you're going to gain a benefit on. I'm going to comment this out and I'm going to add a few more benchmarks. For example, if you have is check, so you have a base class and then you say, is it open class or is it sealed class? Then those checks, both the is and the as will be faster. How much faster? Well, let's run these benchmarks and see how much faster. So results are back and let's see what we have here. So the open, the ease check, 1.6 nanoseconds. The sealed version is check 0.1. So 10 times faster just by sealing it. And it doesn't end there. I'm going to go ahead and comment this out and I'm going to bring in a couple of arrays. This has sealed classes and it only has one item. And same thing with the open class. So we're going to have an array of each type. And I'm going to go ahead and add one benchmark for each where the only thing I'm doing is I'm storing something in this array. So I'm going to go ahead and run that. And once the results are back, explain why they are the way they are. So results are back and let's see what we have here. So as you can see, the open one, 2.3 nanoseconds, the sealed one, 1.6. Not quite as big of a performance difference, but it is there. And the reason for that is because arrays of that type now don't have to have a covariance check when you're setting the value so they can be faster. The last thing I want to show you in terms of performance has to do with spans and a very implicit operator from an array to a span. So the benchmark would look something like this. This is where we're getting an, an array, the same arrays as before, and we convert them into a span to operate of them um, in, a, in a different way. And with that, I'm gonna go ahead and launch this test and see what's happening. So results are back and let's see what we have here. So as you can see, the open one that's converted to a span, 0.8, two nanoseconds. The reason for that happening is because there is no longer a need to validate that the type coming in matches the type of the generic type of the span. So that's why it's so fast. Now I'm going to go ahead and uncomment all that in case you want to grab the code and do something with it. But I want to pull up an issue on GitHub from the .NET repo to show you that this is something that is getting a lot of attention. And in .NET 7, we're getting a special analyzer to look for these types of cases where you can convert something into a sealed and even warn you and hint you or suggest to you that you probably should change that to a sealed class instead. So this is the GitHub issue on the runtime. It is made by Steven Tobe, of course, the master of performance in the .NET team. And all of these things are touched on in this video are here. I'm going to put a link of the issue in the description in case you want to grab it and take a look at how things are faster even on um, JIT ASM level. So I'm going to scroll all the way down over here and show you that, yes, this is an analyzer they are adding. And in fact, if I look for the number, it should be CA1852. Here you go. So this now, the seal internal or private rules has been added in the main branch and it's something you can enable in .NET 7. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and go back to the project and create a new 
file over here, a dot editor config file. I'm going to paste this to treat this specific code CA1852 as a warning. So if I go ahead and I build now, the analyzer will kick in and say, hey, this should probably be sealed. In this case, it's talking about the program.cs, which is internal now. Uh, obviously, we cannot change that. But if I go back and I change everything, let me just go ahead and comment this out for now. So go to the test types and change these to internal. So internal here, internal here, and internal here. If I go ahead and I say build, I'm going to get a warning on this open class. Now this warning pops up saying, hey, open class can be sealed because it has no subtypes in this containing assembly and it's not externally visible. So nothing technically can inherit it. So why don't you just change that to sealed? And the moment you do that, it goes away. Now, again, in my opinion, you shouldn't just stick to internal types. You should also seal public types unless that public type is specifically made to be inherited from. If it is not, seal it. You're getting performance and your code is better because no one that you don't want to inherit that type will be able to do so. You can always open up something in the future if there is a need for that, but you shouldn't really do it by default. The default behavior should be, it should be sealed by default. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreons for making videos possible. If you want to support me as well, you're going to find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more, and like this and the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.